January 6, 2021, a date that will live in infamy. To borrow the words of President Franklin Roosevelt when he stated, yesterday, December 7, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. The bombing of Pearl Harbor was a terrible day for America and the world. So is today. I had a truly inspirational meeting this morning with pastors in our network of undeniable blessing as we charted a better 2021. And I emerged from my office to grab a cup of coffee and I saw on the news mobs with American flags, Trump signs and hats, and even a Jesus saves sign smashing through the windows of the Capitol building, the Capitol of the United States of America. With insurrectionists forcing senators out of their places and occupying the Senate floor. And I wept and I am still shaken. I imagine you are too. I haven't felt that way since 9-11, when America stood stunned and wept as Al-Qaeda terrorists flew planes into the World Trade Center and attempted to destroy the Pentagon. Another day that lives in infamy. The terrorist was clear, Osama bin Laden, calling for jihad against the corrupt and rigged West. His minions did true damage, true believers in a twisted version of Islam believing the lies of a terrorist. In December 1941, the global threat of Adolf Hitler led to the axis of power, seeking to dismantle one nation after another, including via the Japanese imperial war machine, the United States. Two terrible days that will live in infamy. Days that shook America, led by dictators and terrorists. President Trump, elected by America to lead our country over the last four years, has called our democracy rigged, has misconstrued reality in ways beyond the pale, and has led a strange nationalist fervor that rejects the basic tenets of the nation, the Constitution, that the president himself swore an oath to protect and to uphold. On a day when senators were to certify the electoral college vote results, which declare Joe Biden as the next president of the United States, duly elected by the same margin over President Trump as Trump was voted over his opponent four years ago. The president, Donald Trump, and unfortunately too many congressional Republican leaders have done everything in their power to disrupt constitutional processes and the simple processes of even voting itself and everything in their power to dismantle nearly every vestige of the constitutional systems which have made American democracy the standard bearer for a global movement of a nation of the people, by the people, for the people. Today, the world is seeing a different kind of democracy. Too many people have been misled by lies and conspiracy theories and have had their worst fears fanned into violent flames by leaders of our nation who know better. Following the invasion of the Capitol, the capital of the United States, the president went on national television and declared again that the election had been stolen. This will only lead to more disruption and violence and is clearly unconstitutional. Nothing could be further from the truth. And as an American, I've always accepted, we've all accepted, even when we disliked or were disappointed with the outcome, we've always accepted the results of an election. That's how democracies work. For the president not to do so, is not only un-American and unconstitutional, but in my opinion, it's an immoral act because it leads to, inspires, infuses a rise in violence, hostility, and anarchy. 
and on my voice is nothing. I'm the nobody. Uh, spitting in the wind kind of voice. And I'm not a Democrat or a Republican, but I urge the leaders in our network of Free Methodist Churches to pray and call upon your people to pray and refuse to allow conspiracy theories and the dismantling of basic constitutional processes to be promoted in any way as part and parcel of anything we can call healthy and good engagement with our government. To be an undeniable blessing to the world, and that's what we envision. At minimum, means refraining from dishonesty, promoting anger, and rejecting violence. Here is what we covenant as free Methodists to do regarding our responsibility to the state. This is from our constitution. This is what we covenant to. Based upon the scripture, every member of the free Methodist church agrees this is how we shall conduct ourselves in terms of our responsibility to the state. As Christians, we are first and foremost citizens of the kingdom of God and secondarily of this world. Such dual citizenship carries with it both privilege and responsibility. We recognize the legitimate authority of human governments as part of God's plan to bless the world through wise governance that supports what is good and protects against what is evil. Although our ultimate allegiance is to God, we respectfully submit to governmental authority as an expression of obedience to the Lord Jesus and his saving plans for the world. Thus, we commit to good citizenship and good deeds as salt and light in our nation and world that glorify God and bless our neighbors now and always. So, friends, we covenant to commit to good citizenship and to submit to governmental authority. And in the United States, our governmental authority is the Constitution of the United States and the laws of the United States. We submit to that, and we agree, even in areas where we may not like it, that the best way to bring about change, if it must be changed, is through changing the law, but not through violence, insurrection, and the kinds of activities that we're seeing in front of our nation's capital today. It goes on, uh, we covenant to this as well, quote, we pursue faithfulness to Jesus Christ in all things. We work for the common good of all and actively seek to influence social, cultural, and political systems toward the example and teaching of Jesus Christ. We oppose all that degrades, demeans, and dehumanizes human persons and the dignity and value with which God invests them. With these commitments in mind, we exercise our responsibility to vote in ways that are informed by biblical teaching and the church's best understanding of contemporary issues." End quote. We covenant to be so involved, to oppose things which degrade others, which, by the way, clearly violence is, clearly dishonesty and lies is, demeaning and dehumanizing. And we also exercise our right to vote, but that doesn't mean that we will always see what we vote for accomplished in the world. So we respect those around us, we treat one another with kindness, and we seek to do that which is good and uplifting in the world around us. Look, this is what every Free Methodist member in every Free Methodist Church covenants to uphold. When an authority that we don't like is elected, we don't storm the White House with guns. We pray for all in high position and authority. We covenant to act together with kindness and good deeds with our neighbors. That makes a difference. Free Methodists are Democrats. Free Methodists are Republicans. Free Methodists are independents, and I imagine all the other parties out there. Our response, regardless of political affiliation, is to be aligned with Jesus first, not our party allegiance. 
So whoever is elected, for us, Jesus is Lord. And Jesus calls us to peace, not violence, not vitriol. And certainly in a time like today, to seek to love and pray for one another, even if you're on the opposite side of whatever political aisle may be rubbing you the wrong way. Today is a day, I believe, that we'll live in infamy. This will be taught in history classes to my grandchildren and not in a good way. I pray for President Trump. I have since the day he was elected. The Bible tells me to do so. I've never prayed for his destruction or his demise. I pray as I do for every leader, that he act in a manner clearly consistent, the teachings of Jesus and the Constitution of the United States. And I'm going to pray the same thing for Joe Biden, and that he will lead with wisdom. And right now, he needs wisdom to find a way to bring the nation back whether you voted for Joe or not, I hope and pray that you will work with one another to bring about more peace in your church, in your community, in your streets, and in your government. I urge Christians everywhere not to conflate your politics with what it means to, as we have committed together to do, with what it means to work for the common good of all actively seeking to influence social, cultural, and political systems toward the example and teachings of Jesus Christ. Today is a day that will live in infamy, and it is up to each of us to do our part, to embrace truth, not lies and conspiracies, and to seek to bring about healing, not fan flames of anger and resentment, to embrace and resist now a peaceful transfer of power. Pray for President Trump as he transitions away. Pray for Joe Biden as he transitions in. This is the duty of a Christian in America. 